You are watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, uh, new treatment options for people that are suffering with uh, chronic pain. My first guest is Dr. Schellenberger. Dr. Schellenberger, welcome to the program. It's great to be here. Now, uh, before we get into today's topic, because this is a big topic, uh, tell us about your center, because you do more than just treat pain patients. Well, that's true. Um, We do everything that's uh, alternative in nature in the sense of combining traditional medicine with uh, alternative types of approaches to health. Okay. And my my goal is to really is to prevent prevent people from getting sick and we we treat people that get sick too but my what I'm really interested in is getting people in there that are healthy that feel good and they just want to be that same way in 20 and 30 40 years later so you get all types of patients yes, I mean you get yeah. the the people that want bioidentical hormones uh, the longevity crowd and, uh, and 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 pain what so what percentage of the practice is pain and would you like to see more pain patients Yes, I, I, I really love to see pain patients because uh, if there's anything that makes a doctor feel really good, it's taking people out of pain. That's the worst thing that could happen to anybody. I've, that I've learned is that, that right? real quick. Like, yeah, probably half my practice is pain patients. Really? You know, I've talked to doctors, you know, our show airs nationwide, and uh, they uh, confide in me. They don't like the pain patient. Why do you? Well, I like it because the things that I do, it takes the pain away. Okay, most really? Most doctors don't like pain patients because they're... It, there's nothing that not it's a much, crabby kind of a patient. It's not that much out there to help the patient except give him drugs. I mean, you're not really taking care of the problem. I can take the pain away. Is that right? Now yeah. we're going to have to put disclaimers all over the show that results are typical, not typical, but uh, uh, but you. I mean, the results are there. I mean, you're getting a lot of results. That's right. Are you using traditional medicine and alternative therapies? Because I know. You, is that right? Well, yeah. I mean, figure it this way. One, one is you have pain is its own problem. Okay. Now, we, we use an alternative treatment to solve that. Uh, but you figure the other thing is to, uh, the person that has the pain, if they're, uh, if they're healthy and they're vibrant, they're going to be much more likely to respond to any other therapy that I do. So we kind of work on both aspects. We want, I want my pain patient to be healthy, and at the same time, then I'm going to go ahead and give them something to take away the pain. And that, that combination just is uh, a marvelous. Now, backing up for just a moment, your background, training, uh, I guess you were involved in emergency medicine. Well, that's, how, how'd you make this transition? That's, that's how I started out. I started in emergency medicine because well, I remember when I was younger, it was exciting, it was interesting. And, and what I always loved about emergency medicine is you got to go straight to the cause of the problem. And, okay. you know, if somebody came in with a, a gunshot wound, I just didn't give them pain medicine and send them home. We actually went to find out what was causing the problem, literally fixed the problem, and off they go, cured, and it's okay. a done deal. And, um, and that's, that's what I did for so about... So you feel like you're doing that even today in a way? Uh, well, that was the idea. And, Interesting. And after about eight or nine years of doing that, I decided, you know, I'm going to get involved in just general medicine. And that's, and that's when, when I got involved in general medicine, that's when I really came through to me, Randy, that in those situations, doctors aren't able to really get to the cause of things. And, and it, just, it, it, it just made me very curious. I just really wanted to know what is what causes us to get sick. And that's okay. it, you know, in the, in the late 70s, that's when I got involved in alternative uh, and anti-aging medicine because those are the things that really drove me. Okay, so you started out traditional medical doctor, emergency room medicine. You thought, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, that you could have the most impact there. Do you think you have more impact now doing what you're doing? Oh, undoubtedly. You know, there, there's still emergency docs out there taking care of emergencies, so that's just fine. But this, this area, this whole area of preventive medicine, we actually literally take healthy people that there's nothing wrong with them yeah and you initiate a process that keeps them that way until they're until they're old interesting interesting okay now uh you know we invite you on the show to talk about uh, prolozone therapy okay okay uh and, and by the way what is this used for what areas of the body of pain is this used for it's used for literally any area of the body where you have pain okay we do feet we do ankles knees just work your whole way on up uh, obviously, anything along the spine, we do a lot of necks and spines and low backs in particular, shoulders, okay. elbows, wrists, hands, fingers, any place that I teeth. I do teeth, I do TMJ, I do anything where there's pain. With pain. Okay. So let's talk then. Let's start with the back. Okay. Back pain. You know, maybe herniated disc or, you know, the, uh, you know they've tried maybe injections before. They've tried different things, medications. At what point do they see you? 
And who is your typical patient that comes in for the back pain? At what point do they go to you and how do they hear about you? Uh, virtually all the time. Uh, people come in to see me after they've already tried many other tra more traditional sorts of therapies and they haven't worked. So like, like, like what, chiropractic? Well, like maybe chiropractic, like uh, rest, uh, like physical therapy. Uh, some of them have had surgery. A lot of my patients have already had surgery, and the surgery either didn't work or didn't work well enough. All right. Um, then there's certain kinds of neurological procedures where patients can go have nerves ablated and such like that. But most of my patients are people that have pretty much exhausted the traditional or conventional way of treating their condition, and it's not working, and they're just stuck on pain pills. Now, in your area, would you say there's thousands of people that are in pain that don't have to be? Absolutely. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. If, if you know, if the average person out in the audience were to, 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 to just think about the people he knows, he's probably going to find maybe half the people, a third of the people that he knows are in pain of some kind. They just learn to live with it. Is well, that what it is? Well, they don't always talk about it. So nobody, okay. you know, they're not going to tell your friend that you're in pain necessarily. You're going to, you're going to just sort of deal with it. But a lot of people have a lot of pain, and uh, uh, and they just learn to live with it because they don't know what else to do. Okay, so let's talk about your, your. Uh, let's start with low back pain. Okay, so it's called uh, prolozone therapy. That's right. This is one of the phrases you coined. It's an it's an injection with oxygen. That's true. I I, I don't quite understand how it works. So help me understand. Well, to to understand how this therapy works, you have to understand what causes pain in the first place. So what is it? So what causes pain in the first place is decreased circulation. You got to figure your body. When it gets injured, there's processes in the body that cause it to heal itself. Okay. And those processes are dependent on circulation. As long as you have adequate circulation to the area, that area will heal. So if I like bang my shoulder or I bang my arm on something, yeah. uh, that area will heal. I fully expect it to heal and it will heal. But every now and then somebody wakes up and you say, you know what? I had an injury. This injury happened X months ago and it's not healing. What's up with that? How come it's not healing? The answer always is there's not adequate circulation. So in the case area. of uh, low back pain, maybe a little arthritis or a herniated disc, not enough circulation That's or something? That's right. If it hurts, there's not enough circulation. That's okay. what causing the pain. So, so take me through a typical patient comes in. Okay, so they have a herniated disc. It, it shows up on an MRI. What are you doing that, and, or it's pinching a nerve. Yeah. What are you doing? Are you reducing inflammation? What are you doing? Well, we do all of the above, of course, but... But here, here's the process, problem. You get the injury, you have the problem, it creates swelling and inflammation. That swelling and inflammation impede the circulation. Without the circulation, they can't get rid of the swelling and inflammation, and it's a, it's a vicious cycle. But isn't cycle. it just They're a matter of that. it bulging against the nerve that's causing the pain, or it's more than that? It, no, it's, it's not just that disc is bulging. Most discs get healed just on their own. You don't right. actually need okay. surgery for it. If you can get adequate circulation there, but it's a vicious cycle. So you have to reestablish the circulation to the area, and that's what I do. Really? I inject into that area the, the things that the cells there would ordinarily get from an adequate circulation, like, for example, oxygen. That's the main component. That's what cells need to heal. You know, in an injured area, you've got stem cells, you have blast cells. They're sitting there. They're waiting to do their job. They're waiting to fix that area. In order to do that, they need oxygen, but they can't get it because of the swelling and the inflammation prevent the oxygen from getting in. I just shoot the oxygen right in on the area and... What kind of oxygen are you, are, are you shooting in? I, I shoot mm -hmm. it in in the form of ozone. Okay. Now, oxygen that we're breathing right now is, is two oxygen atoms put together. We call that O2. That's the stable form of oxygen. That's why it's in the atmosphere. Okay. We breathe it. Ozone is something I have to make up in the office. What we do is we take uh, O2 from a, from a you know, medical grade oxygen. Okay. And from a we, tank? Yeah, from a tank. Okay. And we pump it through a converter box. In the converter box, those O2s get broken up into O1s and immediately they reassemble. Most of them back into O2, but a proportion of them reassemble into O3. So you have three oxygen atoms stuck together. Now that it's like formula, ozone. It's called ozone. It's more powerful, more uh, therapeutic to the body? More powerful. In okay. fact, studies have shown that if you just inject oxygen into area, nothing will happen. 
you have to eject oxygen in the form of ozone, and that's when the miracle happens. Really? Okay, so where, where else in the world, by the way, are, are they using this? And is this accepted? The, uh, the use of ozone in medicine has been used for over 50 years now, primarily right. in Europe, and which is where I learned it some 30-odd years ago. Right now, the new thing is using it for pain. It's been used for all kinds it's of other conditions. It's working. I mean, are you seeing some... It's astounding. Are you surprised sometimes with the results you're getting? I'm surprised when it doesn't work. Every now and really? then it doesn't work. 